I just feel such a strong presence of the Lord and I just um, feel such a wave of healing in the house right now. And so if you just have a, a prayer language, I just want you to begin to, to pray. I just, we can just pray together. We just thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Spirit of God. We honor you in this place. You're already here, you're, you've broken through, you've released joy, you've released breakthrough, and we know that it's not over, that's just the beginning of the evening. And God, we thank you that you're gonna do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ask, think, or imagine. God, thank you, Lord. We thank you for the river of God that is here. Wow. I'm taking a bit of a risk, but I'm feeling somebody up here in the middle section. I just feel such a strong healing anointing. Who is that for up here in the middle section? I'm feeling such a, like there's, there's a new energy blowing in to your body. I think you may have put a jacket or a shawl over you. Does that make sense to you? I feel such a healing oil just being poured out. Do you mind if I send somebody up to you right now, like one of our, one, or you can come down, you choose. But there's such a healing oil being poured out over your body right now. I asked her if that made sense and she said yes. Come on, thank you, Lord. This is like the Holy Spirit price is right. Come on down. You get to receive what you've won because Jesus paid for it on the cross. Thank you, Spirit of God. Wow, 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 wow. Don't you love it when he hijacks us like that? It's because he loves you so much. God, I just bless her, Lord. The Bible says that Jesus had compassion on the sick and he healed them all. I just feel a compassion of the Lord over you. And not only is this healing anointing just washing over your body, whoa, there it is, but you're gonna heal the sick and see them recovered. I see God using you as a beacon for your whole neighborhood. I see you being a mama for the neighborhood. I see many sons and daughters, but I see sons that are gonna come to you and even speak of you and when they speak about you, they're gonna say, Mama carries glory. Mama carries breakthrough. We need to go to Mama's house. So God, I thank you for the angelic that is over her house right now. I thank you for the spirit of glory that hovers over her home right now. And Lord, I thank you, Father, that you are making her body brand new for this season of revival because you are a Mama of revival and we need you. Thank you, Lord. You know, I feel like what God's doing with her is just a prophetic picture of what God wants to do with everybody in the house tonight. Do you know that when we prophesy and when we speak about revival, that it's not just a, a token word or a trendy thing, but every single time you and I hear about a prophecy of revival, I believe that we are to take that word personally. Personally. Tommy and I talk about this stuff all the time. We're like, God, I don't know how you will it, but I wanna be a part of that. That's how we pray. Here's another hijack, but I'm going with it. I just, I just saw somebody's knee moving where it needed to move. Who's got pain in the knee, even on your way here? Who was that? Who is that? Just wave at me, because sometimes the lights. What? Okay, so let's pray for her. There's just a way, I'm just gonna go with it. Thank you, Lord. I also, yeah, just come up, just come up. And then we're gonna have some healing teams, because now I'm feeling like a little bit of, I'm just gonna start rolling them off. Are we okay with that? So we thank you, Lord. We can, we can talk about, whoa, we can talk about the cross and then we can see a demonstration of the cross. And I believe there's a demonstration 
of the blood of Jesus being poured out right now. I even feel that the blood of Jesus is setting people's circulatory systems straight and regulated. Who is that? I feel that so strongly. That can look like uh, veins in the, I just saw this happen and I'm feeling it again. That There was a, a girl, I, um, I don't know, two weeks ago in Atlanta, I said, I see the blood of Jesus running through veins and you can come up. If any of this applies to you, just come here because sometimes you know, the Holy Spirit likes to swirl it up. That's biblical, pull of Bethesda. So there it is, just take it. Somebody get behind her <laughs> because I feel it really strong. Wow, thank you, Lord. So um, we thank you for swirls of glory, God. So if you need healing, I'm just gonna keep going, but if you need healing in your body, this, you're welcome. You're welcome. Just prayer team, help me get behind people. Just get behind people. Spirit of God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You guys, you guys just go with it. The Spirit of the Lord is over her body. I was in Atlanta and I felt the same presence that I'm feeling right now. And I said, the blood of, whoa, the blood of Jesus is uh, actually touching people's circulato uh, circulatory system. It's getting really thick up here. And I said, he's healing somebody's veins right now. Whoa, thank you, God. Just take it, just take it. But I do say, if you need something, come here, come to him, come to him. I'm not even gonna touch you, he's gonna touch you. And as soon as I said that, just help her, because, and you soak as long as you need to, honey. As soon as I feel there's a double coming for you, there's a double, get behind her, George. Whoa, thank you, Lord. Yes, you and the flower, double for you. Double, double, double portion, totally. It's good. Thank you, Lord. And as soon as that came out of my mouth, she later tells me, I came to the service and I had like the, the thrombosis issue happening in my leg. I'd just been diagnosed with it. It was causing a lot of pain. Whoo, take it, take it. It was causing a lot of pain. And she said, as soon as you said it, I felt like this surge come into my body. And she said, all of a sudden, she said, uh, the, the vein started to go down and the pain went away. Praise God, who's happy about that? If you've had deep vein thrombosis, I promise you'd be real happy about that testimony. It took me a while to get that testimony out, but bear with me. <laughs> Spirit of God's in the room. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for brand new organs. Who needs a new organ? Due to diabetes, due to like liver, kidney. Whoa, who is that? Brand new organ. Thank you, Spirit of God. There it is, thank you, God. And if that's you that needs a brand new organ to work properly, could be a heart, I just want you to come stand right here in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, God. I'm feeling that. I know there's somebody here that needs something with an organ. Who is that? Just come up. Is it you? Okay, come up. Thank you, Lord. Just, you can just come in the, in the swirl, in the pocket, and they'll get you. Thank you, God. We just thank you, Lord. Yeah, they're, they're our team. So God, we just release it now, Lord, by the glory of the Lord. Just recreate, Spirit of God, recreate, God. Wow, I just, see the, I just hear the Lord saying brand new genetics. I don't know if that makes sense. Brand new genetics over you. The blood of Jesus renews your genetics and he renews your legacy. What he does with you, may he do it with your children and your children's children. Wow, there it is. Thank you, Lord. That's it. Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. Brand new, brand new, brand new. Wow, not only for your physical children, I see spiritual children that are coming to you. I see spiritual children in your care. Aramita, can you ask her what her name is? What is your name? Melissa, I just see spiritual children coming to you. And I just thank you, Father, hands of miracles on her in Jesus' mighty name. 
I don't know if this makes sense, but I just see God, I'm sorry, I'm having a lot of feedback here. I just see the Lord uh, removing inflammation from your body. Wow, does that make sense? I just saw inflammation. We just command that thing to get out of your body. In Jesus' name, brand new Holy Spirit, we just give you praise. If you're, if you're in the room and when the Spirit of God comes in like this and just starts touching people, let's just honor what He's doing in the room. Let's just praise Him for what He's doing in the room. Just in your own way, let's just host Him here. Host Him here. Jesus paid for this. He paid for this. He paid for this. Wow. He paid for it. He paid for it. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He paid for it. He thought of you. He thought of you. Thank you, Lord. We're so thankful. We're so thankful. We're so thankful that we don't have to earn healing. We don't have to earn the miraculous. We're so thankful. Thank you, Lord. And I even feel that the Lord is removing disappointment right now for, for, whoa, for people that believed for a miracle and it didn't happen. You believed for a loved one and it didn't happen. I just remove disappointment, the root of disappointment right now in Jesus' name. And I just see the, the faith of God just being birthed right now. The faith of God being birthed in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Wouldn't you know Jesus would take time if he walked into this worship center? Wouldn't you know it? He would take the time. You don't want my word or my ministry, I can assure you that. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord, that Jesus changes us, not sermons. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Teach us to host you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Psalm 92.10, David said, even in my old age, you pour out fresh oil over me. God, I pray for fresh oil. Fresh oil over her, God, in Jesus' mighty name. Brand new, brand new from her brain down to the brain stem, down to the, uh, uh, your spine and your nervous system right now. Any fluid that shouldn't be in your body, we command that fluid to drain and that fluid to leave right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And we just command trauma to go in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oil, oil over the family, oil over the caretakers to see a continual, continual improvement. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Spirit of God. I do feel led to, um, to go after diabetes. Who is that here that has diabetes? Are you already up? Somebody in the room? Or maybe, who is that? Do you mind to come up? Are you okay with that? And we'll just have them pray for you. We have our team up here. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Yeah, you guys just surround her. Come on. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's the new organ, the new organ, God. We just declare a new organ in Jesus' mighty name. New pancreas. Wow. Whoa. I'm not going to touch you. I feel the Spirit of God. Thank you. Whoa. There it is. Just take it. Take it. It's going to be by the hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord. Whoa. The hand of the Lord. Thank you, God. You know, it's funny. Sometimes I feel like the Lord says, just don't touch them, and then I don't, and he just does it. So, God, just take it. Just take it. Thank you, Lord.
Spirit of God, brand new, brand new, brand new, Lord. By the hand of God, by the hand of God. Glory, Lord. I just love you so much. You talk about a persistent woman. We have been here doing Saturday nights for five years. And she comes, I mean, she persistent. This woman continues to come and to receive prayer for healing as if it was the first time that we've ever prayed. And that's why I believe you've seen measurable, break, measurable breakthrough. And you're going to see more. You want somebody to pray for you for healing, ask her. Yeah, you think I'm kidding. It's all over you. Lord, I just thank you for the oil, the oil of the Holy Spirit to be upon you and to be upon your daughter, Miriam. I love you guys. You've been with us from the beginning. May it be unto you according to your faith. According to your faith. Thank you, Lord. Do exceedingly and abundantly all that she can ask her. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. Wow, let me take it. That's it. Thank you, Lord. Wow. That's the glory. Just take it. It's just for you. It's just for you. Right from him. Thank you, God. It's for you, but it's to give it away. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I see a beacon of light over your home. They're going to come to you too. They're going to come to you too and know that there's a difference in your home. They're going to come and say, what must I do to be saved? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I feel, I feel God's calling us right now. I feel God's calling us right now. Will we be that people? Will we be that people? Houses of glory where you don't need a mic, you don't need a stage, you don't need a ministry title, you're a Christian. And that means you're qualified because you're a Christian. So if you're a Christian, you can be a house of glory. You can carry the glory of the Lord within you, but also upon you. And I feel like God is really, really making that a theme right now. That we would be houses of glory, temples of the Holy Spirit. No matter who we are or what place of influence we're called to, the assignment is the same, to carry the glory of the Lord. The function may look a little different from one person to the next, but the assignment is the same, to carry the glory of the Lord. And just this, this word that I, that I have in my heart, it's really just sharing with you prophetic words. And, and, and you know, you guys, I just want you to stay in the presence of the Lord. I want you to stay where you, where you feel led to stay. That's something that, that I feel like... Um, God is really going to make our services and different things look very different. Yeah, just stay with mom. That's awesome. Come on, it's about the generations. Give it to her, God. Wow, whoa. Give it to them, God. George, Lisa, can you stand with them? That's hunger. That's not an interruption. That's hunger. Isn't that how the woman with the issue of blood got touched? She's just like, I'm going for it. Please. Go for it. At any time, you have permission, just come to him here. Go for it. That's what God's doing. He's pouring out his spirit. He's pouring out his spirit. And he falls upon the hungry, those that are hungry. I remember Lisa was with me, but in two weeks in Atlanta, I was speaking on a Sunday morning and I was just going around just talking about my message and preaching. And then all of a sudden this man just comes up and it was like when he came up, I could feel the presence of God like a wave. And I knew the Lord said, okay, enough. <laughs> I mean, he wanted me to talk about what I was talking about, but it was like this holy interruption. And I knew that man's hunger pulled on heaven and I stopped what I was doing. And I was like, we're going with that. God, may we just follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. People can't change us. Sermons can't change us. Jesus is the only one who changes us. Wow. Thank 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just have been feeling the Lord so strongly. The Holy Spirit just speaking to me about preparing. This is a season of preparation. And I keep asking the Lord, okay, what is it? What are we preparing for? And he says, prepare for the glory. Preparing for the glory. And so that's what I've been talking about. You know, you may hear us on social media and different things. We've been talking, Tommy and I, about this being a season of preparation for the glory of the Lord. And you know, we have a friend, she's a prophet in Scotland, her name's Emma Stark, and she said, you know, we're actually not supposed to go from revival to revival, that's not biblical, we're supposed to go from glory to glory. And I totally agree with our friend, because that's scriptural. Second Corinthians chapter three talks about that. We were actually created to go from glory to glory. It's totally legal to come to the Lord every week or every day, rather. We don't have to wait for a church service every day coming and saying, God, I need another level of glory. I'm thankful for what I've seen. I'm thankful, but there's always more. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 that we have the limitless Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit without measure without measure, you can't put a number on it. But I have a secret, you ready for the secret? Is it only comes to the hungry. That immeasurable, that limitless, exceeding, all of those words that we, we see in Ephesians and in different books of the Bible, it is reserved for the hungry. It, it, it just blows my mind when I read revival history, people like John G. Lake, Mar Maria Woodworth Eder, Smith Wigglesworth, all of them that saw the raising of the dead, saw miracles that brought regions to repentance because that's the purpose of a miracle. And that's what, a little bit what I wanna talk about tonight. Are we prepared for the glory where we will see miracles in such a way that regions are brought to repentance where the fear of God rests over cities because of one notable miracle? Maria Woodworth Eder saw it. She was in a city and she saw the whole region come to Christ they had to extend their revival meetings because one person, one, the multitudes came over one that was healed, a paraplegic. And I think it's interesting, in her journal, she begins to tell this story. And if you look in the book of Acts, I believe it's chapter three. I'm off my notes, by the way, but that's okay. In Acts chapter three, what happened at the gate beautiful? There was a notable miracle, one notable miracle that happened. Silver and gold I don't have, but what I give you, I give to you in the name of Jesus. One miracle, and the Bible says that the region, the people begin to gather. They begin to gather. The region heard what happened because everyone knew who this beggar was. They knew who he was. They knew that he was needing a miracle for years and years. One miracle, the fear of the Lord fell over the region and the region came to repentance. That's the glory. One of the manifestations of glory. There's many manifestations of glory, but that's one of the manifestations of glory. And God wants us to be prepared for those type of manifestations that are going to happen. Now, when I talk about something prophetic that the Lord has shown me as it relates to revival, as it relates to the, the Spirit of God, we understand when I say revival, I'm talking about Jesus. Apart from Jesus, there is no revival. We can have the language of revival, but if Jesus is not in there, you will not have revival. We can talk about miracles healing, breakthrough, all of the Christianese wrapped up in one. But if Jesus is not present, nothing will happen. 
I've said it many times and I'll say it again, that revival cannot happen unless we're at the feet of Jesus because only he can raise dead things back to life. A spirit of resurrection only comes through one and that is Jesus. And I feel the authority of the Lord to remind every principality and power that has tried to mock the cross, that has tried to mock the resurrection power of Jesus through sickness, through death, through disease, that you don't have the last word. Jesus had the last word. When he said it is finished, he meant it is finished. May a gift of faith be imparted within the church once again to fight for this thing. It's not just for zealous young people. No, it's for all, 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 all. Acts 10, 38 said all were healed because Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were sick and oppressed by the devil because the Holy Spirit was with him. God is on the move. He's got the resurrection paddles, the resuscitation paddles out. And it's shocking the nation of America. I've seen it. He's got the resuscitation paddles out. And he is shocking the body of Christ with resurrection power. There's a lot of counterfeit going on right now. We just had some good, one of our revival friends send us a video of counterfeit healings, counterfeit deliverance, counterfeit breakthrough happening. And it is not in the name of Jesus. And I got a little upset about that because, you know, that's ours as Christians. Jesus paid for that. Not only did he pay for it, but he instructed us to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out demons. Freely we have received, so freely we give. He gave instructions on what to do when you enter into a city, Luke 9, Luke 10. You heal the sick, you eat the food there. He says, praise God, I'm a foodie, I will take it. He said, you eat the food that they serve you, check. (laughs) And then he says, heal the sick and tell them that the kingdom of God has arrived. It's a sign of the kingdom. So while the spirit of religion is telling the church, okay, calm down with all that stuff, Calm down, I mean, just wait, we don't have time to to heal the sick right now. It's not on our agenda, The, the clock says we can't do that. While the spirit of religion is telling us, no, 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 you know what, just we need to move on, we need to stick with our agenda, we need to do all of these things. While the spirit of religion is whispering lies to the church, there's a counterfeit going on out there. And people are going to it because there's a lot of broken people in America, people are going to the counterfeit. And so I went to the Lord and I said, God, what's going on here? What do we need to do? And I heard the Lord say, I am rising up. I am bringing up a generation. I am bringing up a generation of people. And if you're alive and breathing, you're in that generation. Anytime you hear a generation word, it does not mean 25 and younger. If you're alive, you're breathing, this thing's ticking, it's for you. And you are needed. You are needed. Can you say out loud to yourself, I am needed for revival. If you're a Christian, you're needed. And I saw a picture and the Lord took me back of the story of Moses when there was all sorts of counterfeit signs and wonders that were happening with the dark magicians and all of those people. And what did the Bible say? The Bible says that they all threw their staffs down because Moses threw his staff down and his staff turned into a snake. And then they all went and copied and counterfeit and and, and dark whatever that is and their stuff stirred up into a snake. What happened? The Spirit of God came on Moses' serpent, and that serpent, the Spirit of God, 
And that serpent ate up the counterfeit serpents. That is what we get to look forward to. We're going to eat all that up. <laughs> the Spirit of the Lord is going to devour a spirit of counterfeit and witchcraft and darkness. The glory of the Lord is going to be poured out in such a way that those things will have no way. They won't have room. They won't have authority. And we won't have to spend eight hours screaming at the devil either. Guess what we get to do? Lord, show us your glory. God, you have a resting place here. Oh, Father, I love you and I worship you. And I say, this is your place. I will pay the price and be inconvenienced and maybe not be as rich as I once wanted or have all the friends that I once wanted or have all the popularity that I once wanted, but God, I have to have your glory. That's where the Spirit of God will come and nothing else will be able to trump. The Lord will rebuke them. The Lord will take care of them. God is preparing us for his glory. He's preparing us for his glory in many ways. Where the spirit of God, the fire of God begins to come and say, hey, you know what? That can't actually survive in the glory. Let's just burn that up. <laughs> yeah. I've had one of those burning up weeks where I've been undone. It's actually a miracle that I can come up here and talk. You ask my daughter, Madison and Lindsay, I thought, I don't think I can even get up. I was such a mess. I have felt gutted by the spirit of God this week and gutted again today. Where I'm like crying those dangerous prayers, like God, I'll give anything. I'll pay anything. I just want my life to bring you glory. I pray that the same way he has been wrecking me with that for the past 24 hours, I pray that he will wreck you in the same. That a cry, a guttural cry that would mess you up to say, God, I don't even know what this is supposed to look like, but Lord, I wanna, I wanna have a life that just brings you glory. I just want my life to bring you glory. That's all I've been able to say. Whatever the details, I'm just gonna let him work all that out, but God, let my life bring you glory. Lord, I pray. That's the one reason why we're alive. That's it. Doesn't that knock off a lot of performance? I don't know about you, but it does for me. That's my goal. Like my goal is not to be the favorite. My goal which is not really my personality anyways, but my goal is to bring him glory. And if I say, God, I really want my life to bring you glory, isn't that a song that says, um, Lord, take me up in your glory all my life for your glory? Isn't that a song? Lord, wrap me up in your glory all my life for your glory. What does it say? Catch me up. In your story, oh, I'm making up lyrics now. I'll just tell you for 24 hours, I've been singing it, catch me up in your glory, all my life for your glory. But I think that's legal too. I think it's biblical. We can find that. That's biblical, isn't it? He's the psalmist. Anyways, I'm gonna keep praying that. Catch me up in your glory, all my life for your glory. Why do we need glory? to give him glory. Why would we even ask for glory? Why did Moses ask for the glory? He asked for the glory to give God glory. What did he say? This is another thing I've been crying for 24 hours. I've been crying out and I said, God, how will they know? How else will they know that you're real? How else will they know that you're real unless your glory goes before us? That's what Moses said, and it's so true. How else will people know that Jesus is alive 
that there is only one true God, how else will they come and out of their just belly begin to cry out, what must I do to be saved? How else will there be mass conversions unless the glory and the presence of God comes? It's the only way. And so as, as I go into this, I, I wanna start just sharing with you some prophetic words that God has shown me about our nation. Are you guys okay with that? And the reason why I wanna share this with you is very strategic because number one, I heard the Lord say, really everyone should take the, the stance, like I said earlier, if you hear a prophetic word of revival, if you hear a prophetic word about the presence, when I'm talking about the glory of the Lord, I'm talking about the heavenly manifest presence of God that begins to come down onto earth to where that place looks like heaven. There's no cancer in heaven, there's no lack in heaven, there's no unsaved people running around in heaven, there's no depressed, tormented people in heaven, there's no um, poverty in heaven, there's no hatred in heaven, there's no riots and wars in heaven. And so when the glory of God begins to descend over cities and regions, those cities and regions or homes or people Acts 5.15, come on, our shadow, it begins to carry the very presence of heaven. So therefore, I always say the glory legislates. The glory, the glory of the Lord legislates on earth as it is in heaven. And if it doesn't belong there, it shouldn't belong here. And God is raising us up as Christians. He's raising up our maturity to go for that, to let that be our standard on earth as it is in heaven. And I know that we've heard that very often, but I feel like the Lord is saying, come on, let's raise up our maturity. My Holy Spirit is here to help you. You know, if you're like me, I'm like, God, I see so much and cry out for so much and I have no idea how I'm gonna get there. But thank you, Holy Spirit. Your job is to make me more Christ-like to be able to be a place for glory. So when I talk about this stuff, you are to take it personal, personal. If you hear a prophecy about revival, if you hear a prophecy about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our nation, I believe that it provokes us all to ask the question, what is my part? What part do I play in this? What's my piece? God anoint me for my piece in the puzzle. And so I have never shared this before, but for the past seven years, I've had a reoccurring dream. Has anybody ever been annoyed? I mean, I'm annoyed, it's positive, but just pardon my talk. Annoyed really with like this reoccurring dream that you're like, what does that mean? What is this? So thank God for prophetic friends and, and, and different things like that that can like help me decode this. And I'm sorry, when I tell you it's gonna be a duh, you're gonna be like, are you serious? You didn't get that? But let me tell you why it, you are little prophets of the obvious and I wasn't. Because when I was getting those dreams, it was a really difficult place. Isn't that how God does? It was a really difficult place and I was fighting through like a lot of unbelief and disappointment and all of these things. And so now I believe that there's been like a level of the knowledge of the glory that's coming. So now when I tell you the dream, you're gonna be like, oh, I totally know what that dream means. But seven years ago, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know if you would have gotten it because nobody was talking about this seven years ago. Maybe they were, but not in my circle. So I kept having for seven years Dreams of waves, tidal waves, tsunamis, over and over and over again. And in each wave, in each tidal wave, it was on the East Coast and it was on the West Coast, both of them. These tidal waves, and every time, the only thing that I knew to do is I knew to announce it to people that the tidal wave was coming, but I knew that no one was supposed to run away from it. And as the wave came, and I could hear the thunder of the wave in every single dream. I've lost count how many times I've had this dream. I could hear that thunder. Have you ever been to like 
oceans and it's like when you hear it come into the shore and it's loud and it thunders, that's the way that I heard it over and over again. And I knew that I was supposed to announce that the wave was coming, but I would also tell people, get ready from the wave, don't run from the wave, but get ready for it. And so I just grabbed my kids. That's all I would do. We would just hold each other, embrace as a family as the wave just began to wash over us and wash over us. And so this began to happen over and over. And every time that I saw the wave, there was a piece of me that was so excited. Uh, the majority of me was super excited about this wave, but there was a little bit of fear in it, a little bit of fear. And I began to just ask the Lord like, are we going to be okay? Is, is this going to be okay? Is that? And I begin to take different scenarios. Well, fast forward, I know that I'm supposed to share this now because it's the time for fulfillment. Where the glory of the Lord comes in waves from coast to coast that will saturate the whole nation. And the fear of the Lord, the healthy fear of the Lord, where we love the presence of God, but yet we fear Him in, in reverence. And we're like, God, I don't want anything to stand in the way of me in your presence. I believe that is what I felt in the dream. And it's gonna be the fear of the Lord that blankets our nation. Once again, the fear of the Lord has been lost, if you can't tell but the wave of glory is gonna bring it back. The presence of the Lord is going to bring it back. And so I saw that the Lord began to prepare people for this. And so here we are today and I see it happening before our eyes, but more is coming, more is coming. And something that the Lord told me is he said, one of the waves, there's gonna be a series of waves that happen, a series of waves of glory that begin to wash over this nation. But I believe that a wave that we're seeing right now is actually a wave of promises fulfilled. And I heard the Lord tell me that this week. And I'll tell you why, because God started giving me visions of regions and states that were gonna begin to get ignited with fires of revival and the glory of the Lord was gonna be seen in those regions. And I asked the Lord, I said, God, I'm an all type of person. Like, why is it? Why isn't it just all of them at once? You know, and the Lord began to tell me, this is the wave of fulfillment. This is the wave right now of promises being fulfilled. And he took me to his word. And I'm just gonna give you an example and a pattern, okay? So that you can understand what I'm talking about. So this is what I saw. I saw part, the, the parts of the West Coast. I saw Texas and I saw the East Coast just getting set ablaze, set ablaze <clears throat> with revival fire fire that ushers in the glory, right? And so I'm like, Lord, why are you showing me pockets? One of them was uh, the state of Georgia. We were there. Um, I was there even twice in one month. And Tommy and I were there within like six months. We were there three times. And, and I'm like, Lord, why are you only highlighting certain places in like Texas and like Florida and California, different places? And the Lord said, I'm, I am wrapping things up and I am fulfilling promises and it's gonna look like suddenlies. And this is what he told me. He said in Genesis chapter 50, on his deathbed, his dying wish, Joseph spoke to his brothers and he began to prophesy. And he said, God is going to come and help you children of Israel. He is going to take you out of the land of Egypt, out of captivity, and he is going to give you a land of promise, the promised land that was sworn to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He prophesied. He said, this is coming. And by the way, don't forget my bones and take them with you. That's what he said. He wasn't going to have his bones lying in that crusty ground. He wanted his bones to be in the land of promise. So he said, this is coming. God is coming. Take me with you. And the Bible says that he made them swear to him, swear an oath. We will take your bones with us. And then he went to be with the Lord. Okay, fast forward. Exodus 13. We see Moses, this is way later guys, like way later. We read the Bible sometime and we think it's like next week. 
to be continued in next week's little series. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's how come I liked what Tommy said earlier. What did you say? Your delay is not your denial. Is that what you said? Your de delay is not your denial. How long was it? A very, very long time from the promise of Joseph where he said, this is coming, God's gonna deliver you, you're going to the promised land, take my bones with you. So then fast forward, way forward to Exodus 13, Moses is leading the children of Israel and what happens? They're getting the heck out of Dodge. They're getting out of this land of slavery and going to the promised land. On their way out, holy interruption, the Spirit of God reminds Moses and the nation of Israel, you better go get Moses or uh, Joseph's bones. God will hijack, He will stop things, He will interrupt things to fulfill His promises to you. And that looks like a suddenly. We're on the road to revival, right? But have we seen the fullness of it? No, not yet, that's right, not yet. It's coming, the wave is coming, but we are on our way, on the road to revival. Children of Israel, we have left the building, okay? We have left the old stuff, we have left, and I'm not talking about buildings, right? I'm in a building, I honor the building, but you guys get what I'm talking about. Elvis said it. I think. We're out, okay? That old stuff, we're out of it. We're in a new era. We're in a new era. That old bondage, whatever, fill in the blank. We stepped out of it. As we are walking out of it, God is highlighting right now. Wait, 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 wait. I made an oath. I made a covenant, and my promises must be fulfilled. I made a covenant with California. My glory will saturate that state, and I will not move until that happens. Wait, Texas, I made an oath. I swore to our forefathers and our foremothers that that state would be covered in glory. And then the Lord says, I-95. And I said, where's that? And he said, look in your dream journal in 2018. I went back to my dream journal. Tommy and I were asked to go to Miami, Florida to speak at a conference. And while we were there, one of the pastors at the conference looked at me. He said, I'm really happy that you're here. And I think it's really cool that you guys love revival. But I'm just going to tell you that Miami is the pastor's graveyard. I don't know about you, but when I hear about impossibilities, I get real gritty and I get real stubborn. And I say, oh, I don't think so. Jesus didn't die for a graveyard. Jesus died that there would be life and life to the full. And so I went to bed so frustrated. And I was like, God, I'm not just talking about revival. Tommy and I are doing this just for fun. Like we actually believe in it. So I went to bed that night. Imagine that, right? It's not just a hashtag. Oh, don't get me started. And so I went to bed that night and all of a sudden I have this vision this dream, and I see a huge angel, and it was the angel of awakening, and the Holy Spirit was there talking to me as I saw this. And I saw a large foot step onto the shores of Florida, and I heard the Holy Spirit say, this land will be known as the land of the rising sun, S-O-N, and he said, the eastern seaborne will be lit with the fires of revival. It will usher in like a third wave. Remember the first great awakening, second great awakening, there's gonna be a third great awakening on the Eastern seaboard. So the Lord tells me two weeks ago about I-95, he said, whoa, 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 
Remember the covenant. I made an oath. I made a promise to forefathers, foremothers on the eastern seaboard that my glory would be seen once again on the earth. He did it with Jonathan Edwards. He did it with John Wesley. He did it even with Whitfield, George Whitfield. He was an Englishman, but he came because God sent him here. Many men and women that gave their life to see revival. And, he, and so I, I had to Google, I had to Google where I-95 was. And there it was right before me. From Miami to Maine, I-95. And the Lord began to speak to me that the fires of revival would be lit from Miami to Maine. Have you ever seen the cities that go through I-95? We're talking Washington, D.C. We're talking Boston. We're talking New York City. God, without us even knowing, when we did our revival tour last year, He kept taking us to the east. And we didn't even know what the heck we were doing. We're just like, oh, thank you, Lord. And now we know, and he's not done. And if you sit here and you say, well, we live in Texas, why should we be excited? I'm glad you asked. Number one, because anytime you hear a prophetic word about revival, I live in Texas. God, how can I be a part? What's my part? I'm not moving anywhere. But we can't let the word of the Lord fall to the ground because then he'll just start talking to somebody else who will listen. Did we ever do the last thing that he told us? But we want a new word this week? What, did he, what was the last thing that he told you to do before we ask him for a new word? So that we can actually steward what he tells us. I love prophecy, but prophecy without action frustrates me. I don't like it. I don't like it. So if God tells me something or I hear it from someone else and it's the Lord, I'm like, God, I, what do I do? I want to see this in action. And I understand timing and things like that. But I believe the timing is now. I believe that it's the time of fulfillment like we see in Exodus chapter 13 where he says, okay, wait a minute. As you're going on your way to promise, as the glory of the Lord, and you're going to see that billion soul harvest, that last day revival that ushers in the return of Jesus. I'm making some oaths real quick. I'm fulfilling some promises, and I'm jolting this town and this region and this state because they've got to get ready for what's coming, the harvest. The other reason why you should be excited here in Texas is because the Lord was showing me that Texas is a ruling state. When I prayed about this word tonight, I said, God, why does Texas need to hear the I-95 word? And I saw Texas like with a gavel and it began to hit down and the whole nation reverberated because Texas had a gavel in its hand. You need to know what God says concerning revival in this nation. Because your prayers, your decrees, you're going to make a shift. A shift that reverberates through the whole nation. Laws being overturned. We've already seen it, Texas. You're leading the way with the law of life. Can we believe for resurrection life? Can we without fighting for life? You hear me? I said that the, the, the resuscitation paddles were being shocked. God was going to resuscitate the nation. And we're going to see the raising of the dead, physical raising of the dead. But how on earth can I prophesy that and expect to see it if I, personal, me, I don't fight for life? We will see life in America restored. The life of the unborn. We will see that restored. And I feel even right now that we are supposed to do this right now. God, we pray for the Supreme Court right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we just declare life 
from Texas. Can I have somebody to get their gavel out for just a minute? However that looks for you, just begin to declare right now for the life of the unborn. I understand that all of our problems will not be taken care of by government, but I also understand that we are supposed to be in authority over the land that God gives us. So God, we just declare life right now. We break every cord of death. And God, right now, we pray for a surge of courage a surge of courage and faith for those that are hanging in the balance of what to do on behalf of the life issue in our nation. Lord, we pray for protection over them. We pray, Father, for faith over them and the conviction and the fear of the Lord that is the beginning of wisdom to be over the Supreme Court. And God, I pray for the conviction and the fear of the Lord to be over mothers that would be in the valley of decision. I can pray that, he did it for me. And you guys see our daughter Catherine worship up here every week. And now she's the voice for the nation. I won't go into the story, I wrote it in my book, you can read it in November, but the Spirit of God broke through my life. Jesus entered into my room physically. So Lord, I pray for the same visitations to be loosed across our land, that a spirit of life, which is Jesus, that you would come and convict people, mothers or not, on this issue of the unborn. Thank you, Lord. This is not political. This is the kingdom. Thank you, Lord. Lord, send your angels. We ask that you'd send your angels, God. Spirit of God. And I really believe that what we're seeing on the news and talks about the overturning, that's God stopping to fulfill an oath. He's made that oath. And he says, hold on right here. We are going, first things first. We wanna see the glory, first things first. We cannot tolerate death in our nation. So as Texans, I believe that you have to have a pulse on what God's saying for this nation. Because God's gonna begin to release a cry out of our state. There's gonna be people raised up out of the state with movements, revival movements, social movements, life movements. You wait and see, in this next year, there's gonna be so many movements birthed out of the state of Texas, and then you will know what I'm talking about, about the gavel hitting the center and the heart of the nation and seeing it reverberate to the West Coast, reverberate to the East Coast, because Texas is going to legislate. But thank God for what he's doing, but guess what, there's more. Are you shocked? There's always more. So one, Genesis 50, we see a promise and a covenant made. Two, Exodus 13, a promise remembered. And three, Joshua 24, a promise fulfilled. You fast forward hundreds of years, 
Moses, they brought the bones out, right? I believe that's where we're at right now. But we know that there's more. There's more coming, that wave of glory, that promised glory. So then there's Joshua. Moses dies, Joshua comes in, he leads the children of Israel into the promised land. And the Bible says in Joshua 24 that the promise was fulfilled and they buried Joseph's bones in the land that Jacob had purchased. Promise fulfilled. And the Lord said, I am raising up a Joshua generation and I'm done with this. I am raising up a Joshua generation in this hour that is going to not only remember what I said, but will push it forward to fulfill, to partner with me to see a fulfillment of the promises of what I've said. 